Hey, what's going on everyone? We're getting closer and closer to summer and nothing says summer like a crisp, refreshing stout. That is, if for some reason you think stouts are crisp and refreshing. But either way, I'm gonna make an oatmeal stout, so let's get at it. Potty time, potty time, potty time brews. This song ain't no good, but we got nothing to lose. This time I'm doing a plain oatmeal stout. None of that coffee crap in there. We're gonna see if the grains can kind of bring out that coffee-ish flavor without actually dumping some cold brew coffee like I did with the last one. This one's fairly similar recipe to the last one, so feel free to watch the last one and not this one, or if you've watched the last one, you don't need to watch this, but for those of you who haven't, I'm making another oatmeal stout. And like with all good beers, we're gonna be starting out with that crystal malt. Crystal 60 to be exact. Why? Possibly some caramel flavor. But the mainstay of this is actually Maris Otter, 4.25 kilograms. Add to that biscuity flavor, kinda like everything else is gonna be doing. Then we're gonna add in about half a kilogram of flaked oats for that oatiness. And if we wanna add some toastiness, we'll just throw in 454 grams of Munich malt. Then we'll top it off with 300 grams of biscuit malt. Well, at this point you might be asking yourself if we're looking for so much biscuit flavor, why not just use all biscuit malt? Well, the problem with biscuit malt is, is that you only wanna use it about five to 15% because in the process to make the biscuit malt, it basically loses all its enzymes and you need to rely on other malts enzymes for a conversion. Then we'll hit it up with some chocolate melt to give that coffee flavor and maybe even a hint of chocolate and finish it off with some roasted barley to add just that last bit of bitterness. And the beauty thing about making a stout is there's lots of different color grains and it looks great going through the grain mill. Look at this magic, fantastic. And once you have it all milled up, you might as well finish off with a mandatory grain grab. Oh yeah, and I added some rice hulls. Don't like oats. Don't trust them. They stick the mash. And for the water profile, I read up that basically you're just looking for a balanced profile for a stout. But for some reason, I went with this profile here. Let me know what you think of it and where I went right or wrong. But enough of all that grain stuff. Let's get to the brew day. I dumped the grist in. It was almost 14 pounds, which doesn't seem like too much considering the grain father is supposed to be able to take 20 pounds, but I did have to stir it carefully in order to make it not go in that little hole at the top there and then mix in with the clean wort. Then I got it all set up, put the pieces in there, got the little overflow valve on, but I did run into a problem with the recirculation. The hose is at the wrong length for this height of mash and it kind of ends up pointing upwards. I did have to adjust it once or twice to make sure it wasn't pointing at the glass lid. Once I got the mash going, I did actually get ahead of the game and I measured out the two ounces or 56 grams of East Kent Coldings. And one of my favorite things about Bruna Stout is how it looks and how it smells after the mash. Nice and dark, smells delicious. Then I lifted the grain basket out and moved to the sparge. It was flowing well thanks to the rice hulls. After the sparge, I dumped the grains and started heating up for the boil. There was a bit of sludge on top so I skimmed it off and threw it away. As it heated up, the color really started looking great. It started kind of as a creamy color and then went to a nice dark foam. When you stirred it up, it kind of went back to the creamy color, but it looked good anyway, so I liked it. The 220 volt grandfather brought it to a pretty nice boil. I added in the East Kent Goldings at 60 minutes for the only hop addition of the batch, but then I wanted to give a test of the new fan I bought for ventilation. I only set it up on the floor for now, but it was pretty silly how well it worked. Just don't mind the fact that it was blowing humid air towards the kegerators. However, all the vapor condensed before leaving the flexible hosing, which seemed good, but I'm not sure how well it will dry out, which might lead to mold or some other stuff in there eventually. After that, I pulled out the hop spider so I could start recirculating the wart through the counterflow chiller in order to sanitize it. I then filled up my all-rounder with water and star sand and gave it a good shake. The yeast I'm using for this is Lalamand Nottingham, which is an English-style high attenuating yeast, but if you look at the website, it almost looks as versatile as USO5. So I might need to try it with some other styles eventually. I pitched the yeast first, then pumped the chilled wort into the fermenter, letting it drop from a distance for that little bit of oxygenation that helps the yeast perform. The beer ended up starting out at about 1.057 gravity. I fermented it in my laundry room, which works kind of great during the winter, but I now know it gets a bit hot in the spring or summer. I probably won't be using it much until the fall. Slow-mo walk not warranted. Before the fermentation, it started off pretty normal at about 23 degrees, then it spiked to about 27 degrees and settled back at 23 degrees, which is a bit higher than the yeast recommends. I fermented for about a week and then cold crashed and added a bit of pressure to the all-rounder so it wouldn't collapse during the cold crash. The interesting thing is that by adding about 10 psi, it didn't seem to change the gravity significantly on the wrapped bill reading. The reading only decreased by about 3 points. 
But overall, the beer started out at a 1.057, ended at a 1.010 for a 6.2% alcohol by volume, which is slightly higher than the BJCP recommends for that style. And here's the first pour of the beer. Overall, it's turning out like it has a nice brown head on it. Pretty good cascading foam. A little bubbly there. Don't worry about that. Let's see what she tastes like. Well, if you've made it this far and you haven't done so already, you might as well hit like on that video and maybe even subscribe to my channel for some more brewing content. Either way, let's get ready for another one of my amazing tasting sessions. Um, yeah, in the past, not so good at tastings. No real fancy wordology for this, but one of my buddies bought me the Beer Dredge Flavor Wheel, which I guess is kind of like the sip and savor cards that Doing the Most has been doing. But either way, this gives me a little bit more information of real beer words, if you care about it. Um, things like mouth feel and balance, body, thin versus sick, bitterness, low versus high. Stuff like that. It might help me work on my verbology, but who knows? I'll keep looking at it. Maybe eventually, 50 or 60 more reviews down the road, I might be good at it. But either way, you want to know what this oatmeal stout tastes like? Well, let's check it out. A little bit on the nose there. So it smells stouty. Uh, it has that, that roasted coffee flavor that kind of, I guess you're looking for in an oatmeal stout. Um, I would have gone into the BJCP category information on this, but it's category 16B. Read all about it online if you want but it's just kind of all over the place from sweetness to bitterness and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just have a read of it. No sense me uh, going through that because there's a wide range of what it can be. So either way, get no fancy hopness off of it. So might as well go in for the taste. I don't really taste much different from when I did the cold brew coffee in there. It has a coffee-ish taste, which probably comes off the chocolate melt there. Very good. Uh, it's probably a I don't know, maybe some sort of medium medium mouthfeel. It's not too thin for sure, but it's definitely not uh, not as thick as like, I don't know, a Belgian or something like that, which isn't really comparable, but sure. Yeah, it just, uh, it's good. The color, uh, I guess I didn't really go over that, but you look at the color, it's black. Um, yeah, maybe I can go into the phone here. One second. And see if any color shines through it. Nope, she looks pretty black. The phone will not color through it or shine through it. So yeah, it's real, real nice color. Real good coffee-like smell. Kind of just what I want for the stout. I think I may have over-carbonated a little bit. I put, the, I put it at kind of the high end for the carbonation. Uh, take a look at any of those Blickman carbonation charts, maybe here for one quick second. And you'll see, but I like, I like my beer carbonated, so I have it kind of at the high end there. And it is kind of cold right now, so you probably would warm it up a bit and maybe a little more flavor will come out. But either way, this is a really good oatmeal stout. I'm super happy with it. And yeah, I guess there's just one thing left to do. Goes down real nice. Stouts, for some reason, although they're thick looking beers, real easy to drink fast. No reason to drink fast other than really got nothing else to do right now, so might as well get the day started. Either way, thanks for watching. Again, like, share, subscribe if you want to, and have a good one. Oh, by the way, you may be interested in checking out this video here. This one's a real good one. Generically really good. <laughs>